Anzu prepares to find herself in a new video game, surrounded by her favorite things. However, she quickly realizes that the game is not what it appears to be. The episode begins with Anzu standing on her doorstep, clutching a grocery bag and a package. A new video game is in the package. She rubs it on her face and kisses it, relieved that her long wait is over. She is excited about this new video game. Anzu always played video games with the boys in elementary school. In middle school, she preferred staying at home and playing video games to hanging out with her girlfriends and flirting with boys. Anzu is a huge chocolate fan. Her classmates are perplexed about how she can eat so many chocolates without becoming ill. Momohiki, her favorite pet, is a cat. Romance has no place in Anzu's life, but she finds herself in an awkward position with a good-looking guy. Weekends are Anzu's favorite days because she can play video games and eat chocolate all day. Anzu is sitting comfortably on a cushioned pillow beside her bed, Momohiki in her lap, and a large plastic bag full of chocolates beside her. She is ready to begin her day by playing her favorite video games until dawn. As the game begins, Anzu is bewildered as to why the intro is different, but she continues to play. The game shows a video of a girl meeting a man and having feelings, and then a relationship. It's lame and corny to Anzu. She wonders why the game differs from the image on the cover. Suddenly, a potato-like figure with stick arms and legs exits the screen, wearing a wizard's hat, cape, and a wand. He congratulates Anzu on being their first test subject. Riri introduces himself as the wizard who grants wishes and dreams. Anzu is taken aback and has no idea what is going on. Riri displays some explanations written on the screen for Anzu. Anzu is angry that there are so many male characters and that the explanation is so long, when it could easily be explained in three sentences. Riri responds to Anzu's desire with three sentences, but Anzu is enraged because she wants it to be simpler and easier to understand. Riri begins to explain that he came from the magic world to help people like Anzu, who are lacking in romance. He asks Anzu when the last time she was captivated by the opposite sex was. Anzu guesses it was Lord Matthew, or swordsman Musashimaru, the main characters in her favorite games. He tells Anzu that now that she's in high school, she needs to dream bigger and more realistically. Anzu wishes Riri would leave, but Riri interrupts her and says that she doesn't need to worry about anything now that he's here. She has always avoided anything related to romance. Riri introduces her to dating through this new dating video game. Anzu pretends that she doesn't understand anything Riri says. Riri ignores her outbursts. Anzu doesn't care what game she plays as long as it is designed for female players. And now, as the first test subject, she has the opportunity to live the life of a true heroine in the game Riri created. When she attempts to play the game, she receives a score of zero. She explains that she thinks it's a terrible game with terrible writing and production values. Anzu and Riri are arguing about the game, and Riri teases Anzu that she knows how dating works in the virtual world, despite having no real-life experience. Anzu concurs, stating that she has completed numerous dating video games. Riri pursues Anzu by telling her to imagine what it's like to be surrounded by hot guys in real life, just like in the dating game. He suggests that her heart would flutter with excitement. Anzu is intrigued by the offer and inquires as to its truthfulness. Riri confirms it, saying that it's a normal life with a guy from the dating games. She will be preoccupied with the serious hot guys who will begin to appear around her. Despite her temptation, Anzu begins to think rationally and realizes that she is content with the love of her life, Momohiki, her cat. As a result, she notices that Momohiki is missing. Riri confiscated everything Anzu loves, from video games to chocolates to Momohiki, for her to focus on her dating life. Anzu says nervously that it isn't possible, but Riri begins to laugh sinisterly. Anzu panics and checks her video games, only to discover that they have been replaced by Goro snacks. Riri consoles her by telling her that the Goro snacks are soft, but Anzu immediately checks her for chocolates and discovers that she is out of chocolates. Riri ate them and informs her that it is harmful to her health. Anzu Anzu screams in frustration. Anzu refers to Riri as a monster for what he did. It's the cost of her future dating life. Anzu is enraged by what Riri did. Riri explains that it is the only way to get her to pay attention to hot men. Instead of a boyfriend, she finds comfort in chocolates when she is lonely. Anzu prefers to spend the entire day playing video games instead of setting dates and times. Her three greatest desires are a major impediment to her romantic life. She will only get it back if she establishes a stable dating life. Anzu tries to persuade Riri that she can live without guys, but she can never live without Momohiki chocolates, and video games. Riri just slaps her and tells her that's why she is chosen as the first test subject to solve Japan's extremely low birth rate problem. Anzu is irritated to learn that it is the cause of everything that is happening to her. She is unconcerned about it. Riri states that she does not know because she did not read the entire explanation he gave in the beginning. 
Riri will do everything he can to help her have romance in her life for Japan and for her salary, which irritates Anzu even more. Riri recalls that he forgot to turn off the stove at home and that he must return to Magic World. Anzu grabs him and tells him that she's not going to be a part of it. Riri reminds her that once she presses the start button, there is no turning back. Even if she rides a mud boat, which is a joke, it's too late. Titanic, the real boat she'll be riding on, is full of romance. Anzu is still in rage and warns him that the boat will sink and her life will be miserable without her three desires. She wants Riri to return her reasons for living, but Riri quickly bids farewell and departs for the magic world. Anzu tries to stop him, but she is unsuccessful. Anzu rushes out of her room to look for Momohiki. She sees her mother and asks about Momohiki. Her mother points to the air conditioner, where Momohiki is sound asleep. She is still terrified, and she begs Momohiki to show her cute face. Simultaneously, Anzu's father arrives home from work early. Her father is unexpectedly transferred to the United States, and he requests that Anzu's mother accompany him. Her mother accepts his offer. Anzu stops wailing to Momohiki and immediately turns to her parents to ask if she will go with them. Anzu must be left behind for two to three years due to her schooling. Her parents assure her that she will be fine being alone for a few years and that they will bring Momohiki with them. Anzu realizes that what Riri indicated is coming true and it's happening quickly. She also recalls that her father is only a post office employee, so the reason for the relocation baffles her. Unlike Anzu, her parents are overjoyed and immediately pack their belongings and prepare to leave. And in no time, they're at the front door, telling Anzu to eat properly and to always lock the doors. Anzu appears to be carrying the weight of the entire world on her shoulders, right now. She is forced to live on her own in their home. Riri appears out of nowhere in the middle of her rant, telling her he needs to establish his playing ground. Anzu grabs Riri, spins him, and throws him with such force that Riri bounces on the wall repeatedly because of her frustration. Riri tells that he expected nothing less from Anzu, who is the anti-heroine. Anzu becomes angrier and grabs Riri and shakes him while saying that she doesn't care what he calls her. She wants him to turn everything back to normal, including her dearest Momohiki. She shakes Riri even more when he says that it's impossible. Anzu sprints outside their house, wishing she could catch up to her parents and yelling her displeasure. She visits every store that sells chocolates, but they are either closed or sold out, leaving Anzu with no chocolate to purchase. People are staring at her because she is already panicking inside the store. She swears she won't let Riri tell her what to do. She is certain that even if a hot guy appears in front of her, she will not fall in love easily. No one can match the high standards of the 2D characters she adores. She had already established her expectations based on the male characters in her video games. Anzu intends to never fall in love with the hot guys who will appear in front of her, because if no romantic relationship develops, Riri will have no choice but to abandon her and give up. This idea gives Anzu hope for regaining her three most cherished desires. She will be the romantic killer in Riri's romantic thriller, as she will end all romantic development with the hot guy who will appear before her. Anzu begins to walk out of the store, intending to return home and carry out her plan. But as she opens the door, she collides with a hot guy, causing his phone to fall down the road and break. She recognizes him as one of Riri's hot guys. When the guy acts cute, Anzu almost falls into the trap. She offers to pay for his phone, but he says that she isn't obliged to pay for it. Anzu apologizes for what happened and rushes out the door to go home, awkwardly laughing to avoid the potential romance that will develop. Meanwhile, Riri is keeping a close eye on her from a distance. Anzu is on her way to school the next day. She can't believe she met an adorable guy yesterday, but she keeps her plan in mind. As long as she doesn't get involved with any of the guys, she won't have to worry. Riri's sudden appearance behind her ruins her morning. Anzu runs away from Riri, but he continues to follow her. Anzu tells him to leave her alone, because people will think she's crazy talking to herself when they can't see Riri. Riri, on the other hand, explains that they will not notice her talking because Riri has it covered. She tells him that she will simply ignore him because he is so irritating. Riri uses his magic to cause Anzu to fall down the stairs, and warns her not to underestimate his power. He flees before Anzu can exact her vengeance on him. Suddenly, the cute guy from the day before appears in front of her. She recognizes the scene from the game, in which the girl clumsily falls, and the guy catches her. She also noticed that they were wearing the same uniform, indicating that they attended the same school. Another guy, who happened to be the adorable guy's friend, appears and asks him to assist Anzu. Tsukasa, the hot guy, only looks at Anzu and walks away because she refuses him. A girl confesses her love to Tsukasa as they walk down the stairs to board the train, but he ignores her. While waiting for the train, another girl approaches him, and they discuss what happened. Tsukasa says that he just doesn't want to give the girl the wrong impression. Anzu is even more irritated because the guy has a bad personality, and she will never date a guy like that. When they talk about Tsukasa's phone, Anzu wants to cry and run away, because she realizes Tsukasa can't afford to buy another phone. 
They ordered the same food from the school cafeteria. Anzu's friend tells her that the girls are after Tsukasa because he's reserved and doesn't smile often, which contradicts Anzu's perception of him. She also claims that Anzu didn't notice because she was playing her video game during lunch. He is also living alone, and they are wondering why that is. Riri appears and tells her that a romantic relationship begins with a negative first impression of the opposite sex. Anzu is dying of boredom at home. She becomes hungry and decides to cook dinner, but a cockroach appears on her way to the kitchen. She is terrified of it and recalls her mother removing it for her. She tries to use insecticide, but it is ineffective. When it tries to fly to her, she sprints outside her house and into the park, wearing different slippers and carrying nothing. When the rain begins to fall, she seeks shelter among the benches. Tsukasa discovers her in this situation. The episode ends with Tsukasa standing in front of her, holding a grocery bag and an umbrella while staring at her. When Anzu thinks she has everything under control, she doesn't realize that it's now out of her hands. What will she do if she finds herself with the man she should avoid, in order to reclaim her three most cherished desires? The episode begins with Anzu sitting inside a bear-like head in a park while it rains heavily. Anzu is cold and worried about getting sick. She wants to go home, but she's worried about the cockroach. She is absolutely terrified of it. A pair of shoes appear in front of Anzu as she sneezes. Tsukasa stands in front of her, looking down at her as she looks up. Anzu tries to escape as she realizes what is happening, but she is apprehended by Tsukasa. He squats so he can properly speak with Anzu. He asks her if she ran away from home because of a misunderstanding with her parents. He also informs her that she can wait for the rain to stop if she desires. But there has been a pervert lurking in the park at night for the past few days. Anzu is terrified, and she wants to flee. But as she stands up, she hits her head on the ceiling. She thanks Tsukasa and runs away, but Tsukasa immediately chases her down and grabs her by the hood of her hoodie to hand her the umbrella he's holding. Anzu is moved by the gesture and begins to fall for him, but she realizes that if she accepts the umbrella, they will eventually become friends, which could lead to a romantic relationship. So she declines it by telling him that he is getting soaked by the rain. Tsukasa insists on giving her the umbrella since his house is nearby, but Anzu continues to reject it. She claims that idiots like her don't get sick easily, and she doesn't want to owe Tsukasa any more favors after the phone incident. Tsukasa, on the other hand, had already noticed her now runny nose. Anzu tells him to leave her alone, but her stubbornness convinces Tsukasa to bring her home with him, so they can get the spare umbrella that Tsukasa is no longer using, and Anzu will no longer owe him anything. She simply agrees to it to end the argument. When she notices that he's holding her hand, because they're both holding the umbrella, Tsukasa immediately lets go and tells her to hold it properly as he walks away. Anzu chases after him, because he will get soaked in the rain. She ends up hitting his head with the umbrella. Tsukasa becomes irritated and turns to face Anzu to rant, but she quickly apologizes. Tsukasa grabs the umbrella and holds it up for Anzu, telling her not to flee. They walk down the street together. Anzu is tempted to surrender in this situation. Many girls fantasize about having their own spot, sharing an umbrella with a handsome man. When they arrived at Tsukasa's house, he makes Anzu wait outside his bedroom door while he went inside to get the other umbrella. Anzu is stopping herself while waiting, because she is getting excited just thinking about being inside the house of a handsome man who lives alone. She reminds herself of her favorite video games and characters. Tsukasa interrupts her by placing a towel over her head and telling her to dry off. To avoid being tempted again, Anzu resorts to imagining her favorite characters while she is with Tsukasa. Tsukasa asks why she was alone in the park and waiting for the rain to stop. Anzu turns her back on him out of embarrassment, attempting to tell the truth, but she is unable to do so. Tsukasa assumes it's a robber, but Anzu corrects him, saying it's a roach. Then she immediately regrets having said it. Tsukasa is surprised that it was due to such a minor issue. Anzu is irritated that he thought it was a minor issue, because it was important to her. She sobs, explaining that she can't stand it. She explains that her parents are working in another country, and that they brought her cat with them, who eats bugs for her, and that she ran out of bug spray. It began to fly to her, so she fled from home without anything. Then it began to rain. It's the worst for her, and she sobs even harder. Tsukasa starts laughing at Anzu's expression. She is surprised to see him laugh because everyone thinks he is reserved, and rarely smiles. Tsukasa apologizes for his laughter while Anzu feels bad. Tsukasa agrees that it is truly the worst. It shatters Anzu's fantasy of her favorite characters. The fantasy world is defeated by reality. And now Anzu resorts to thinking of Mamohiki, which has worked. Tsukasa goes through the events perfectly, and now he understands why Anzu is wearing different slippers. Tsukasa interrupts Anzu's daydreaming about her cat by asking if she wants to get it. Anzu is perplexed, but he clarifies by saying that if she wants him to get the cockroach in Anzu's house, he can do so. 
Anzu is overjoyed and really wants him to, but she remembers that she needs to draw a line to stop it, so she declines. Tsukasa notices Anzu avoiding him. She denies it, but Tsukasa is certain that she is avoiding him. He says that if it is due to her breaking his phone, she should not be concerned, because he tells her that he was considering replacing it. He is more interested in Anzu now that she is avoiding him. Anzu is taken aback, because it is the polar opposite of what she desires. Tsukasa says he won't help if she doesn't want him to. Anzu immediately informs him that she requires his assistance, believing that this will satisfy his curiosity about her. Tsukasa suddenly places his jacket on Anzu's shoulder, stunning her, so she doesn't get cold outside. Anzu accepts that she is defenseless against attractive men in reality, after the transparent image of Momohiki vanishes. When they arrive at her house, Tsukasa is holding a rolled newspaper, and asks Anzu where she saw the cockroach. With a terrified expression, she tells him that it was in the kitchen earlier. She also can't believe a handsome man is inside her house with her. She is thinking about it when she notices something black under her center table. She is so terrified that she runs up to Tsukasa and knocks him off. She's pointing to something black under the center table when she notices it's a camera lens cover. Tsukasa informs her that she is the one who is frightening him. As he turns to face Anzu, they are both taken aback by how close their faces are, and Anzu is on top of him. Anzu is shocked, but she still believes that the man should be on top, not her. Because they are preoccupied, the cockroach appears out of nowhere to disrupt them. Anzu stands up in a panic, steps on Tsukasa, and jumps on a nearby chair while shouting and pointing at the cockroach. Tsukasa sighs and rises to grab the rolled newspaper. He tries to hit the cockroach, but it dodges and disappears beneath the table. Tsukasa finally catches it, and hits it with the newspaper roll when it gets past the table. Tsukasa informs her that the bug is gone, but she refuses to look at it. While Tsukasa is putting on his shoes at their front door, Anzu expresses her gratitude and apologizes for stepping on him. He dismisses her by saying that they'd only see each other at school, and he mentions her surname. Anzu is taken aback that he knows her surname. Tsukasa informs her that he noticed their family nameplate. She had forgotten about it. Tsukasa introduces himself as Tsukasa Kazuki and asks if she is also a freshman. She confirms and states that she is in class 2, whereas Tsukasa states that he is in class 7. He also tells her that she should stop ignoring him, which catches her off guard. Tsukasa refuses her offer to wash the jacket and eventually returns it. Tsukasa reminds her to keep herself warm so she doesn't catch a cold, and to cover her tummy when she sleeps. Anzu teases him by asking if he's her father, but then tells him to do the same thing and eat something warm. Tsukasa imitates her by asking if she is his mother and opening the door to go outside, but the wind is too strong and he closes it again. Anzu apologizes for his inability to sprint back to his house. Tsukasa slowly opens the door the other way, but a piece of wood pierces it, surprising both of them. They turn on the television and see that there is a storm that will last all night, and they advise people to stay inside and avoid going outside, because they could be seriously injured. Tsukasa believes that it is bad. Anzu on the other hand, is distressed by what is going on. She recalls the first time they moved into their dream home, followed by her parents' sudden departure, and the front door being broken. She imagines talking to her parents. She tells them that the situation can't get any worse, and that a handsome man is stranded inside their house. She realizes he's spending the night at their house, just like in the game. The situation is causing Anzu stress. She had never had a decent conversation with him until today. In her mind, she sees herself standing at the end of a platform numerous feet above the ground, shaking and shouting that she isn't ready yet, while Riri is floating and cheering for her. When her stomach grumbles and Tsukasa hears it, she becomes even more irritated. He admits to being hungry as well. Anzu offers dinner, but Tsukasa is unsure. Anzu says it's a thank you for killing the cockroach. She's looking for something to cook, and as she grabs a frying pan, Riri appears out of nowhere, telling her to demonstrate her culinary skills. Anzu immediately strikes Riri with the pan, causing him to hit the wall. While warming up by hitting the pan in her hand, she asks Riri if he caused the storm. Riri agrees, which irritates Anzu even more. Riri admits that he is the cause of everything that has happened, and that Anzu should be grateful. Riri perplexed as to why it didn't lead to the romantic situation he desired. Anzu cuts him off by telling him not to involve the city in his plans. Riri assures her that he is in charge of all potential damages, including her door. Riri orders her to impress Tsukasa with her cooking skills, but Anzu realizes there's no need to do so, so she settles for ready-to-eat noodles. Tsukasa chooses the flavor after she asks him. Riri is irritated because Anzu ruined his romantic setup plan. To stop him, Anzu pours hot water on him. The storm is still raging as they finish their meal. Anzu is preoccupied with everything. She realizes that if Riri caused the storm, it will last until morning. So, if resistance fails, she will face it head on. 
she decides to let Tsukasa spend the night with her. Tsukasa does not want to bother her, but she insists and departs to prepare his bath. Tsukasa is mystified by Anzu's actions. Anzu lends him some of her father's clothes. He asks Anzu if he can bathe first, to which she agrees. Riri appears and tells her how happy he is that Anzu agrees to the inescapable romantic night. But Anzu ignores him and leaves to find a blanket for Tsukasa, who will sleep on the couch. Tsukasa didn't wear the shirt after taking a bath because he doesn't want to appear malicious because of the shirt's design, which Anzu agrees to because it's all she can find. Riri and Tsukasa are taken aback by Anzu's attire as she exits the bathroom. She gives up her dignity to oppose Riri's plan, which irritates Riri. Anzu asks Tsukasa to play reversi with her before going to bed. He agrees because he thinks he's good at it. Tsukasa is becoming upset because Anzu continues to win. Anzu mocks him for losing all four rounds, which irritates Tsukasa. He invites her to play Monopoly with him, a game of pure chance with no strategy. They agree that whoever loses would prepare the lunch for tomorrow's school lunch. As Tsukasa continues to win and get only the best spots, Anzu realizes Riri is behind it all which irks her even more. Tsukasa wins the game, and teases her by asking who he can't beat in a million years. Riri appears to tease her, so she repeatedly attempts to punch Riri. Tsukasa offers assistance as Anzu begins to make their lunchboxes, which Anzu accepts immediately. She thanks him for volunteering, but Tsukasa tells her that she must at least make the omelet. Tsukasa objects immediately when Anzu adds sugar to the omelet, but Anzu tells him it's normal, just like pineapples and sweet and sour pork and apples and potato salad, and they agree to disagree. Anzu informs him that she is making the omelet, and that she can season it however she pleases. Tsukasa watches Anzu cook the omelet, and teases her that she's making scrambled eggs. Anzu tells him defensively that it used to be okay, but he tells her it's nothing to be proud of. When they're done, Anzu's omelet is a flop, whereas Tsukasa's beef wrap is flawless. Tsukasa chastises Anzu for eating their tomorrow's lunch. Anzu tells him to make more so she can eat some, because she's a growing girl and instant noodles aren't enough for her. He blames her for everything. Riri is smiling as he watches them because everything went as planned. Anzu is overjoyed with the way their lunchboxes turned out. She recalls the train station confession scene, and believes that Tsukasa is not who he thinks he is. They said he was reserved, but she had a good time with him. While they are washing the dishes together, she reminds herself that being friends with him is fine as long as they do not date. Anzu invites Tsukasa to play cards, which he accepts after he uses the restroom first. When Tsukasa goes to the bathroom, Riri appears and tells Anzu that they should be cuddling while watching movies, and that she should cast a spell on them so they can be romantic with each other. Anzu tells him that she will not fall for his tricks, but Riri continues to cast it, causing Anzu to fall asleep and saying with a sinister expression that it is time for children to sleep. Tsukasa is surprised when he returns. He wonders where Anzu's energy went to sleep so quickly. He tries to wake Anzu up but fails, so he covers her with a blanket and takes her glasses off. Anzu grabs his hand as it is about to move away, and places it on her face. She is dreaming of Momoheki and tells him that he has Momoheki. He's curious about what she's dreaming about, and tries to take his hand off her face, but Anzu is too strong. The episode ends with Tsukasa reminiscing about their fun times, because it's been too long since he's had so much fun. He turns to smile at Anzu while calling her a weirdo.